Be strong. What does it mean to be strong when the heart aches and there is no hope in sight? When holding back tears no longer helps? When the road is rough and it weighs you down? How do we stay strong? Stay strong in community because there is a better life in needing others. Though our lives may not be perfect, and we can't promise you there will be days without the dark clouds, but we can promise to be there when it rains and when it hurts. We will be there with you when all seems bleak. We will guide you to wholeness. We are living your dreams. I feel bad the way marriages are breaking. Sometimes the marriage has not broken, but the individuals in the marriage are fried. They are emotional, they are traumatized in the marriage. There is negative thought patterns in the marriage. There is childhood trauma. There is all kinds of terrible things, unhealthy emotions being ventilated in the, in the marriage. The children from that relationship are already fried before they come out from life. I created a scenario for you now. When a man slept with a um, sister's child, the sister said, oh, leave him, he's my only brother. He gets married and he repeated the vicious circle. The circle that started with you, you must ensure that it ends. I don't know what's the Nigerian actor. There's one you like, the fair one. That just married another actor. Ramsinua. Ramsinua can stand here. Eh? Ramsinua can stand here and act Pastor Ben start to finish. He's not Pastor Ben. Ramsinua can go in a movie and become Benny Hinn. Benny Hinn. Be Benny Hinn. He will raise the dead in a movie. Benny Hinn. All those things he's acting is not inside him. Every Christian who does who have not gone through heart transformation but you have right action you are an actor an actress once the episode finishes you return back to who you are have you noticed that nobody goes to social media to show their bad side except the people who are chasing clouds so you can go to, to social media remove your clothes not because it's not because that's when you act you are acting a movie to gather crowd if you are doing something you are not, that's what you call eye service. Once the movie is over, you will return to a default position. Which one do you want? So Pastor Ben will say that you are, that the person is bipolar. Go back to the message they preach on Sunday. I've listened to it again this morning. Some of us are quarreling with creation. Some of us are quarreling with others. Some of us are quarreling with God. Some of us are quarreling with themselves. So those four levels of poverty, some people have it at different levels. He said, the fruit of, the fruit of light is goodness. The fruit of light is uprightness of heart. That's the reason many Christians fall into performance orientation. So you are disappointed, you are disillusioned that you are putting so much effort in this Christian work and you're not seeing it. At the end of the day, you turn around and look for who to blame. Let's go to one scripture. So what are you supposed to be working? Pastor Ben will tell you, work on your beliefs. All the energy you are putting on your action is called perfected presentation. It's called charm. Start working on your beliefs instead of your actions. Let's go to the next scripture. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 2. I say Ephesians 1 today. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 4 to 5 and verse 8. Ephesians chapter 4, 2, 4. Ephesians 2, 4. Stop fighting to be who you are not. Start working on your beliefs. Ephesians chapter 2. He said, God, I love this scripture. He said, God who is rich in mercy. God who is rich in mercy. God is not destitute of mercy. Mercy is his default position. God who is rich in mercy. Tell your neighbor, God is rich in mercy. Tell your neighbor, God is rich in mercy. Tell your neighbor again, he's rich in mercy. Uh, 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 let's, let's, let's go. He said, because of his great love which we, he loved us. So his mercy and his love go together. God is so rich in mercy. 
His love is super. Look at the look at the effect. Look at the effect. The next, the next verse, verse, verse six, verse five. Say, so even when we were dead in trespasses, because of His mercy, because of His love, even when we were dead in our sins. He made us alive, not because of your strenuous efforts. Bring it in NLT or bring it in TBT. I have it in way more translation. Yeah. He said, even when we are dead and doomed in our sins, he united us into the very life of Christ and saved us by his wonderful grace, not by your strenuous efforts. God's mercy and grace is responsible for you being forgiven. You were already dead. Listen, when something is dead, it doesn't respond to stimuli. To stimuli. It doesn't respond to stimulus. When something is dead, the thing is dead. So which means at the point, the worst that can happen is that the thing died. Yet, his love and mercy went to where you were dead and pulled you out. So our job is not to continue to prove something since you are dead already your job is to say how do I get my entire system to believe in his love and his mercy what is the implication I told you last week I told you last week you're going to find a chair and a table if you don't have chair and table this one of lying down on the bed to read Bible. The one you read and the one you did not read, you don't know the difference. It's true. You open, I know you opened on your phone. Your WhatsApp is on. All your social media handles are on at the same time. All your, uh, the WhatsApp, you have two. You have business WhatsApp, but all of them are on. That's where you have your Bible. Ha! Let me read the Bible. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 4. God who is rich in mercy. You are lying down on the floor. And never helped you that day. There is light. You put on air conditioner. By the time you wake up, you end in open heavens. Is that for, by the time, sometimes you woke up, open heaven. But so when he's saying, Shalom. 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 You are now joining us to say, Shalom, Papa. Shalom. Shalom. Some of us have never gone to, whether there's open heaven or closed heaven or closed gate, or that you have never attended anyone. You say, it doesn't concern me. It doesn't concern me. You are deceiving yourself. You are deceiving yourself. This one, you're lying on the bed to read Bible. You don't go, it will work. It don't work like that. Or work. Walk. Air walk. Air walk. It don't go work. Either you sit on the floor or you, the way you read for common entrance or jambo or you read your, your masters is the same way. Because you need to work on your beliefs. Once your beliefs changes, it will compel an action. Your beliefs will always compel an action. If God helps me, I'll be able to show you fake faith. Anything you believe, because someone only believes she can sit down, that's why she sat home. If she looked at the chair and she saw three legs. So, hey, it's not God who is rich in mercy. It's not your strenuous effort. It's the same thing I was preaching. He said, now that you are light, walk in light. And how do you walk in light? Walk on your beliefs. Let's still look at that scripture, verse 8 of it. Well, look at verse 5, verse 8 of it. Verse 8. For, for it was his wonderful grace that we believed in him. Nothing we did could ever end his salvation. For it was a gracious gift from God that brought us to Christ. Nothing you did. Beloved. It's nothing you did though. So the first thing I said that we must equip ourselves. To minister to people who are wounded. The second thing I said that. We must, once you have received the free gift of salvation, you have been instructed to be light. You now need to walk in light. And I told you the implication. The implication is not more, more work. We don't advance forward. Pastor ben, I heard this from Pastor Ben. We don't advance forward by good behavior. We don't advance forward by behavioral management. You advance forward by good beliefs, not good behavior. 
The same way in our children. If we're going to parent our children, we must first of all have good beliefs that you're going to inculcate in your children. Ah. The other day, Pastor Ben and his son were sitting down. And they were discussing very deep things. I just sat down like this, I'm looking at them. I'm wishing I had that, those moments with my dad. They were discussing boyfriend and girlfriend. The boy said, ah, there are too many boys. There are too many fine girls. There are too many. So the, the father said, so you don't want to marry? I said, no. So the father says, he said, okay, what if as I am now, I'll go and bring a girlfriend? He said, no, you can't bring a girlfriend. You're already married. Me, I'm not married. And they said, discussing. And while they were discussing, I saw teaching moments around it. Let me try it to my dad. Let me try. Say, Daddy, there are too many fine boys. I don't think I want to settle with one boy. Now, gone, 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 gone. My mother will be in trouble that I raise such a discussion at all. That's how many of us were raised in timidity and fear. And it is that timidity and fear you're using to raise your children now. He said, now so they train me, now they better, now go to train them. Forgetting that there is a change in syllabus. Are we still friends? The boy came back and he, he, he shook his dad. He said, my guy. They shook like this. Me. I said, me and my father, my guy. You're finished. We have, we have bent, we, we think transformation will happen by good actions. No. Transformation is a heart change. That's why culture will eat strategy for lunch any day. You say in this house now, nobody, everybody must come by seven. Go and sleep. Some of our friends will say when their parents have slept, they will arrange arrange something and cover it to look like them. Fiam, gate, nightclub. When they come back, they will, it's their father's car they will use. Them. They will push the car. The father will come. One of my friends told me, the father will come and touch the bonus of the car. I say, ah, you guys say witches, they use this car for transportation at night. Yes, when I say witches, they use this car. One of my friends told me that. The next day they will go again. So the father now called prayer warriors who came and saw a vision that they used that car to do both in which in Covon every night. So they, they, they started with 40 days fasting and prayer to bind the hands of witches that come to carry the car to go and do to go and do tuke tuke in the Covon at night. And the brother, the boy, the boy and his friend that used to carry that car will join in the prayer. Let's begin to pray. The boys will say, hey, <laughs> And in the first, they still went. They say it's a senior witch in their family. That, that until the person dies, the car will always go to the coven for, for a meeting. So, all of them have been praying. They identify the person who is carrying the thing. Is one innocent you know, witch. They identify the witch, the auntie in the village. Who is carrying the car to the coven? So they mounted prayer upon prayer for that auntie to die. When the boys, when the boys, they see that their parents have slept, fear, they will push the car out quietly and return before they wake up in the morning. And they will also join morning prayer. So you some of you here, what you wanna do? What you wanna do? May you pray, say your children no do to you. So, so whatever rules you bring until the heart is changed, there's no strategy of parenting that will work. Not just parenting, transformation, anything we want to do in this nation until, mm, until our hearts change. If you like, bring Operation Keep Nigeria Clean, Operation Rebrand Nigeria, Operation Don't Kill, no matter the operation we bring, things will continue the way they are until the hearts of people change. Are you learning anything? Are you learning anything? Are you learning anything? So it's not the church. It's nobody is your problem. Until there's a heart change. That's why here we have 12 cultures. What is a culture? 
Culture means a lifestyle, a heart transformation that is behind the strategies that you're seeing. So every culture we have has its own strategy. Let's look at another set of scriptures. Are you ready for this? Number four, you need to grow up. Number one is we must all be equipped. Number two is that you need to understand that once you give your life, once you receive the new birth, you have been instructed to walk in the light. So be who you are. Let's go to number three or number four. Friends, number three, you need to grow up. You need to grow up. Are you ready for this? I, I, I should give you one more scripture on that. Okay, okay. Let me give you that scripture here. You need to grow up. You need to grow up. I will explain this. It's very easy to explain it. You see, when you give your life to Christ, don't forget. Don't forget. There are junks in your mind, memories, and emotion. Mind, will, and emotion. Mind, will, and emotion. When you now go further, you say understanding, relational skill, perspective, worldview, mindset, and mentality, and all of that. But let's take three. Mind, that is memories. Will, then emotions. This, if you have damaged emotion, but someone will call it mad identity. If you have damaged emotion. Shalom, dear friends. There is a mindset that says that you are a powerless victim of circumstances. Let's challenge that mindset. Let's break it down. Because that's not who you are. You are actually a victorious overcomer. We'll be joining together with other God's secret weapons. People that God have in his arsenals as his weapon to break down the gates of opposition and bring down the kingdom to earth. Your mind determines the direction of your life. Join us on the sixth day of the week, otherwise known as Friday, at 11.45 p.m. West African time for God's sacred weapons. This will be showing on all my handles, K. Benson Akini. Thank you so much. We can break down the stronghold, the warehouse of thoughts that is responsible for the situation that we are seeing in our lives. God bless you. If your mind has been damaged, what could damage your mind? Remind me to tell you that later. I want to quickly go to the scripture. You are born again. You need to grow beyond incidences that happened. You need to grow beyond trauma. How do you do it? In inner healing, in inner healing work, they give us all kinds of tools. However, they tell us that no matter the tool you have, you must subject it to the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that determines what will work. Let's go to these scriptures. First Peter chapter 2, verse 2. May I be like you. First Peter chapter 2, verse 2. Change my heart, oh God. Make it ever true. Hey! Change my heart, oh God. May I be like you. I love this song. Change my heart, oh God. Make it ever true. Hey! Change my heart, oh God. May I be. Let's quickly go. He said, as newborn babes, comma, what should you do? Desire the pure milk of the world that you may grow by it so if you do not take the word you will be stuck in life bring it another translation NLT Amplify Classic let's see it if you don't grow you will not be able to outgrow this, this negative patterns we are talking about he says like newborn babies you must crave pure spiritual milk so that you will grow into a full experience of salvation I love, I love this cry out for its nourishment if you are not growing, you will not experience the fullness of your salvation. Because there is a process of transformation that begins after you give your life to Christ. 
So some people are stuck in damaged emotion. They are not growing their emotions. Yes, you are 35, but you still express emotion like a two, two, two year old baby. You throw tantrum. Those areas have not grown. You have grown biologically, but your emotions have not grown. Mm. You know, when you come to emotions, there are three kinds. There's the present emotion, there's the future emotion, there's the past emotion. If any of these emotions are damaged, if they are weakened, it means that when those areas won't grow, and the only thing that will make it grow is the word of God. Just like when you come to memory, when you come to mind, there is present, there is past, there is future. So how do you look at your future emotion, future memories? If you can stand here, you look at the future, you can't see anything. You can't see anything about the future. Your imagination, your, your ability to imagine is damaged. That's hopelessness. You find out that some people eventually commit suicide because when they, when they find themselves in an event, it's an event. No matter how painful or traumatic it is, it's an event. It is created for you to go beyond it. If you're not able to come out of it, that's how some people take their lives. Because instead of having real emotions, some people have guilt. Some people are so guilty. They are so guilty. I shouldn't have done this. I shouldn't have done this. I shouldn't have done this. They get to a point where they can't face themselves anymore. So they disconnect from self by themselves through suicide. So it says, hey, if you want to grow, begin to desire the sincere milk of the word. That's why Romans 12 verse 2, he said, do not take the form of this word. He said, be transformed by the renewal of your mind. I can go into all of that, but I, I want to finish this. Why are you looking at me so quiet? If you check it in different translations, it's saying the same thing. Desire the sincere milk of the word. So which means, if you are not meditating on the word, you are not growing. You can't outgrow. You can't outgrow hey, childhood wounds. I don't deal with people's past. I ask myself, why is your past affecting your present? That's what I deal with. Because Jesus dealt with your past. I'm not Jesus. I'm not saying if your past is affecting your present, it is dysfunctional. You're supposed to outgrow emotional trauma. You're supposed to outgrow unhealthy negative patterns. You're supposed to outgrow all kinds of abuse, physical abuse, sexual abuse, uh, 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 what's that, neglect, and all of that. You're supposed to recover from the pain and the loss and emotional injury. How do you recover? By growth. And that trans another scripture, another scripture. Ephesians 3, verse 14 to, to 19. I love the scripture. How do you recover? You recover by growth. Friends, you're supposed to grow. When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, yes? The creator of all things, verse, that's my scripture, verse 16. Bring it in another translation and we'll come back here. Bring it in New King James or King James, then we'll come back here. I want you to look at this how rich just these verses how rich he says that he will grant you according to the riches of his glory comma now bring it in another translation according to Jesus comma bring it in amplify classic okay I ask him to strengthen you by his spirit not a brute strength but a glorious inner strength amplify classic May he grant you according to the rich treasure of his glory to be strengthened and reinforced with mighty power in the inner man by your spirit. So go back to the original, go back to the translation we started. Very rich preacher. No, New King James, New King James. Very rich. Very rich. It says, grant you according to the riches of his glory. Let's assume that this bottle is the amount of God's glory. This is how rich his glory is. The content of this bottle is how rich the glory of God is. The writer Paul is saying, bring that scripture back. 
the writer is saying that you will be strengthened that he will take that you will increase in vigor you will grow you will become empowered with what? with might there's a difference between this might and issues what is this might? is achieving power which is different from his the fact that he has power the fact that God has power is different from saying he's achieving power his power to do his capability he said God God says strengthen K Ben Sinahibe remember this is the riches of his strength strengthen I don't have strength I'm drinking local Z boost I'm taking, I'm being infused with local cell boost. Then he said, strengthen you with his power. Where? In your spirit man. This one I drank is my body that will take the power. But the one I'm talking about is to reinforce and strengthen your spirit man with his capability. Be strong. What does it mean to be strong when the heart aches and there is no hope in sight? When holding back tears no longer helps? When the road is rough and it weighs you down? How do we stay strong? Stay strong in community because there is a better life in me than others. Though our lives may not be perfect, and we can't promise you there will be days without the dark clouds, but we can promise to be there when it rains and when it hurts. We will be there with you when all seems bleak. We will guide you to wholeness. We are living your dreams.